Hey everybody, I'm Tommy Scoville and this is the Tommy Scoville Show. Welcome to the boat. Uh, tomorrow, people, we're going to pick a name uh, for this boat. I will be doing that uh, tomorrow, either in the morning or the afternoon. I'm going to come on here, I'm going to tell everybody the uh, finals, the, the finalists that we're going to vote on. Uh, and some of the funny ones that didn't make the cut, like the SS Polo. <laughs> some of the other ones that, you, there are some really funny ones. But uh, I'm going to be going over that tomorrow. Um, I want to thank everybody for the comment section. It... You, you could get so much just from reading the comment section. Uh, even if I weren't up here speaking, the amount of uh, knowledge that uh, all of you bring to this boat, the dream is becoming a reality. It really is. I'm also filming a little different. I'm uh, trying something out. I hope this works. If it doesn't, I'm sure that all of you will be kind, except Elwood and James J. But we know. We know what to expect. <laughs> Today, folks, I want to talk about the steps. Um... First of all, I'm going to go over it real quick. Most people know these, but I'm going to go over the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous, depending on um, you know which one you're in. They're really basically identical. Um, number one, we admitted that we were powerless over alcohol and that our lives would become unmanageable. Number two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Three, we made a decision to turn over our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Uh, we made four, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Five, we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Six, we were entirely ready to have God remove these defects of character. Um, seven, we humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. Eight, we made a list of all the persons that we had harmed, and we became willing to make amends to them all. Um, in nine, you do make direct amends to all of such people, except when to do so may injure them, uh, them or others. 10. We continued to take a personal inventory, and when we were wrong, we promptly admitted it. 11. We sought, through prayer and meditation, to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood Him, praying only for knowledge of His will for us and <clears throat> for the power to carry that out. And 12. Uh, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry these messages, uh, this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in our affair. People, let's start with number one. We admitted that we were powerless over alcohol and that our lives had become unmanageable. What if by some chance your life didn't become unmanageable? That's a problem. There are alcoholics on this planet. There are drug addicts on this planet who, by most standards, their lives are manageable. If you were a, a trust fund baby, right? They call them trustafarians. If you were given $15 million and you do two grams of cocaine a day, you still pay the bills, right? All of the things that society would call managing life um, probably fit. Uh, in fact, people... Many people with uh, a lot of money are able to drink and drug all the way until they close the casket because in their mind, um, they, they fit the norms of society. How many times have you heard someone say the term functioning addict or functioning alcoholic? Okay, so with the first step here on the, uh, the boat, the way I look at it is this. You admit your life is ruled by addiction and that your willpower alone can't fix it. So it's slightly different. There are going to be some similarities in this and there are going to be some differences. Whether or not your life is unmanageable, whether or not you're paying the bills, if your life is ruled by addiction, if your thought processes during the day spend more time thinking about getting your drug, doing your drug, procuring the drug, whatever, uh, if you, that is your focus, right? If that's the dictator of your country, um, uh, admitting that is the first step. And it can be anything, people. It doesn't have to be a, a chemical. It's addiction. If all you think about is gambling, if all you think about is pornography and, and spend hours watching it, or if all you think about is eating and you comfort yourself, it doesn't have to be. Addiction is addiction. It makes absolutely no uh, difference whatsoever whether or not that addiction requires you putting a chemical into your mouth, you know, or any other way you want to get it into your body. It does not matter. Um, number two. We assemble a support family and we ask God or that support family for help. It is essential, people, in my opinion, that you have to come to grips with the fact, as we said in the first step, that your willpower isn't going to get it done. So you need help. And like I said earlier, uh, you can borrow the willpower of the 1,300 people on this boat. We will lend you that willpower. Uh, when you come to think of a power greater than yourselves, if... 
That power for you is God. Fantastic. Statistically speaking, it's a good thing in rehabilitation if you believe in God. However, if you don't, it's not something that you're going to manufacture for the purpose of getting sober, right? You either believe in God or you don't. Um, and I'm not here to try to talk you into anything other than sobriety. Um, so if you need to believe in a power greater than yourselves, allow it to be this boat. I'm not being arrogant, folks. What I'm saying is this. If I got into a fist fight with you and you're six foot four and you weigh 260 pounds and you can bench press a Chevrolet, you're probably going to beat me. But if I invite 15 of my friends from this boat, there's no chance of that happening because that would be a power far greater than myself. Make sense? It's the same thing mentally, spiritually, along the lines. If you admit that your willpower alone is not good enough, then get on board the boat and allow us to support you, allow us to help you, and allow us to... Make it so that the focus of your life becomes recovery. The focus of your life becomes living a sober life. And what does a sober life mean on the boat? It doesn't mean not using. That's not using. Sober means that you are in control of your life and you're happy. You're happy without addiction. Not white knuckling it and getting through. You are living a happy life without addiction ruling it. Okay? So... You don't have to think about it in terms of a higher power, but you need a support family. You have to assemble a group of people that are going to help you get through those times when you want to pick this thing up and call the dealer, where you want to put the key in the ignition and drive to the liquor store. Coming to the comment section, watching a video, bringing all of this support family. Read the threads of how everybody here treats one another and tell me that this is not a power greater than doing it yourself. The third step, fully commit to an addiction-free life. List your why and your reasons. People fully committing is probably the most important step here. Obviously, it's not the first step because until you admit that your life is ruled by addiction, we can't get past that, right? That is the first step for a reason on both lists. But to fully commit, right? You've seen Texas Hold'em, right? You're all familiar with gambling. If you got a pretty decent hand, you throw a couple of chips in, right? You might bump the pot a little bit. But if you take it and you shove it all in, what you're saying is there's no going back. I'm either winning this hand or I'm going home. Um, that's the kind of commitment that you need if you really want to live a sober life. So the third step is fully committing people. It's shoving every chip into the middle. Committing to that addiction-free life also means listing your why and your reasons. They'll tell you, you gotta do it for yourself. You gotta do it for yourself. And they're right, you have to quit for yourself. But the reasons you're quitting for yourself can be your daughter. Um, it can be your wife. It can be your husband. It can be God. It can be anything. But if you don't know what it is, I promise you, what stops you from calling the dealer, you need a why, right? As addicts, the only important thing in our life is us. Once you list the reason, once you list the why, you're going to get the results, but you're not going to get the results without the reasons. So it's essential that you fully commit to an addiction-free life by listing your whys and your reasons. Four, you own your past. You accept responsibility and ask forgiveness of yourself and of others. And I want, in, in my opinion, that needs to be a generic apology. That's, I've used the example before. Don't go up and say, hey, man, I'm really sorry I hit on your wife. Right? It's that... The idea is to unburden yourself and it's to let people know that you made mistakes. That's owning your past. But if I walked up to that same person and said, you know what? I have acted like a jackass so many times when I was under the influence of alcohol or drugs or whatever the case may be. I'm really sorry. You know, I'm really trying to become a new person, but I wanted to make sure that you knew just how sorry I am for anything that I did that upset you. Good and generic. It's not going to hurt anybody. Um, in AA and NA, they really want you to, they want you to, you know, state the exact nature of that man. Oh man, don't injure people. It's all about us. And it's so about us that as people start to get sober, they feel the need to tell you every little minute detail. It's not important. I promise you it's not. Owning your past is, own it. You can own it and talk about it on the boat. You can say, boy, I hit on this guy's wife. You know, what kind of an idiot thing was that to do? Then go tell the guy you're sorry for being a jackass. You don't need to tell him the details. I hope this makes sense, people, because the last thing in the world we want to do is hurt people who don't need to be hurt because we were idiots. Um, number five, this is huge, right? Define who you were and define who you are going to be, and you better do it in amazing detail, right? Who are you going to be and who were you? Uh, you can't pick who this new 
person is going to be. I couldn't have made the new Tommy Scoville without acknowledging and owning the past and listing in detail who was Tommy Scoville. He was going to lie to you. He was going to steal from you. He could not be accounted on for anything. Um, his entire life was a focus about him and nothing else, right? And if it sounds like I'm speaking about myself in the third person, it's because that man is dead. He is so far away from who I am right now that I can't even think about him in terms of me. I can't. Um, for me, that person will always be Tommy. It will not be me. Because that Tommy was a dirtbag. Plain and simple. But by defining who that dirtbag was, it made defining who I wanted to be so easy. I'm never going to lie. I'm never going to steal. I'm never going to cheat. Right? I am never going to be uh, the person who can't be counted on again. Define who you were, and it will really make it easy to define who you want to be. And that is absolutely essential to this process, in my opinion. Number six, acknowledge that your mistakes were made by the old you. They were made by that Tommy. And that the new you is without blame. This is the thought of self-forgiveness. Do you understand? If right now you're listening to my voice for the first time, and or you've been listening to my voice for a month, and you say, this is the day that I quit that new creature is without blame until it earns that blame. Okay? That is so important, people. Forgiving yourself. The reason we own our past is to get that crap out in the open and set it on fire. We're going to make a huge pile of all of those things that we did that were reprehensible and throw a match. Let that burn down. I mean to the ground. Burn it. Get rid of it. Make it your past. You understand? It's so essential. If you're going to start the process of self-forgiveness, then you need to acknowledge that the mistakes you made were the old you. The old you was ruled how? It was ruled by chemicals, people. That great comment. The great comment. The person said, I, I like to view it as a dictator. Boy, it dictates your life, right? It was a dictator. Well, that dictator's dead. Right? That dictator's dead. Now you're a new creation, and that new creation as of right now, there's no blame on that, right? Let's keep it that way. Let's keep it that way. Um, seven, enjoy the new you every day by choosing to be happy, right? Be like Chi-Chi, <laughs> you know? Just be a really happy person, and, and happiness is a choice. I promise you it is. Be Charlie Mullins. You heard his story. He's the most positive and happy guy because he chooses that every morning when he gets up. So enjoy the new you every day by choosing to be happy. Celebrate your successes. We owned the past, right? We owned all of those things. We got rid of them. The new creature deserves high fives. Come here and tell us about it, right? Let your support family celebrate those successes with you. Every one of them. I don't care how small they are. Remember the comment? I walked by the liquor store. I walked by the liquor section and I didn't even want any. <laughs> That's a success. And it's one that needs to be celebrated right here by your support family that gets it. The rest of the world might go, yeah, I do that every day. Well, of course you do. You were never a slave, right? You were never had a dictator ruling your life. You weren't a slave to that substance. So you don't understand what it means. That is a success. That's a victory. Come here. Celebrate them. It's important, people, that you celebrate every single one of these successes right? It's going to make happiness a whole lot better. So celebrate the success and keep short accounts each day, evaluating where you are moving forward or back. You're blameless. The new creation is without blame, right? Well, the only way to keep it that way is to keep really short accounts. Have you ever noticed I come on here and I say things like, boy, I did this and I'm not happy about it. You know, I, uh, the methadone thing comes to mind. What I said was insensitive and stupid. And uh, I needed to apologize. I didn't like how I handled the gentleman that left the comment about cannabis. I, I think I came across as preachy and, and holier than thou. And how did I come to that conclusion? Because I try to keep really short accounts. I try to evaluate the things that I do because I don't want to be the self-centered, everything is about me, Tommy, that that last guy was, right? So you have to keep really short accounts, people, to see if you're moving forward or if you're moving backwards, right? At the end of every day, ask yourself the simple question. Was I moving forward towards sobriety? I don't care if you haven't had a drink in six years. Are you still moving towards sobriety? Because sobriety is not using, it's a different thing. We know this. Because if you're not moving forward, people, ah, you're moving backwards. There's no neutral in this game. You're moving forward for the rest of your time on this planet. Or you're moving backwards. We're going to be 
We're going to be cruising in the right direction, people. And yet the only way to know that is to keep really, really short accounts. Don't wait two months and go, yeah, I think I'm getting out of control. The, every single day, they're going to take a, a inventory of what you are, who you are. Are you moving forward? Are you happy with who you are? That's absolutely essential, people. Because if you're not, then you're moving in the wrong direction. Plain and simple. So, I'll repeat this. Enjoy the new you every day by choosing to be happy, to celebrate your successes, and to keep short accounts each day, evaluating where you are forward or backward. By doing this, you will celebrate the successes. If every day you take that, that uh, inventory of how you're doing or you're moving forward, you're gonna think to yourself, well, you know, I, I got past the booze and the liquor store and I didn't even think about it. Success, if you're not keeping short accounts and if you're not trying to keep track of whether you're moving forward or backwards, then that's gonna get overlooked. If you overlook your successes, people, you're shooting yourself in the foot because you need that feel-good chemical in the brain. Do you understand? This isn't symbolism. This isn't about um, something that's, you know, uh, a new age concept. This is cut and dry stuff. We need to reprogram this gray matter to reward us for good things instead of bad things. It used to reward us for opening the fold, putting the Coke in the spoon, whatever it is you were doing. That was a reward for that. Those were rituals that you got rewarded for. Now we need to reward ourselves each and every time we're moving in the right direction. If the success is just, I got through today without being a jerk. I was nice to everybody all day. You're moving forward, people. That's success celebrated, right? Train your brain to give you feel-good chemicals for all the right reasons. The only way to do that is by following step, step number seven. Capiche? Okay, super important stuff. And then number eight, become the solution. Plain and simple. By, by the end of step seven, you're taking every day you're doing this inventory. Why? Because you're a new creature. You're not using, right? That part's done. You're moving forward. You're celebrating your successes. You're there. So now what? Well, you had a support family that helped you get there, right? Every day they helped you get there. Don't leave that support family. And I'm not talking about, I'm not doing this for retention, people. I'm not. Your support group can be outside the boat. But you build that support family. Don't leave it. Um, and then give back. Become the solution. Because the word isn't getting spread. It's not getting spread by, by the old system. I mean, yeah, having had a spiritual awakening, we decided to drag people to meetings. I mean, really, that's what they're talking about. We had a spiritual awakening, so now I'm gonna bring people to these meetings and they're gonna sit in rooms and we're just gonna keep perpetuating what we're doing. And as far as I'm concerned, if you gotta spend two or three hours a day sitting in a room listening to people talk about horror stories from their past, I don't think that's positive. If you disagree with me, go to NA or AA. I'm not mad at you. If it works for you, do it. It doesn't work for me. And I hear every day people that say it doesn't work for me either. So. Find what works. The boat works. There's no question the boat works. So now that you are clean, become the solution. Become a support for somebody else. By the way, you can do this the first day that you decide to be a new creation. Day one. Because by coming here and saying, I'm struggling with this, someone's going to hear that and go, I'm not alone. That's huge. Do you understand? That is huge. You can become part of the solution day one. Come here. Share. Right? Become part of the solution. Step eight, become the solution by being in a support family, by being a, a member of this boat, right? By being part of, uh, you know, what we're doing here, by being a shipmate and supporting others, you are going to drill that sobriety into your life. You're going to drill the positive into your life and you're gonna get reward chemicals. You don't believe that, people? I wasn't making it up yesterday when I said that I read things that you people write where it says, you know, I, I haven't had sugary uh, uh, sodas in, in a month and I've lost this much weight. It's better than the plunge or hitting the bottom of a syringe. Nothing in my life has ever turned the feel-good chemicals in my brain on, like helping people here doing this. I mean, I'm not doing this for my health, people. I'm doing it because I love it. I'm doing it because the rewards, the feel-good chemicals in the brain are better than anything you can buy for a gram. I promise you, right? You cannot get this stuff by the gram. 
The only way to do it is to become part of the solution. This was a 20 minute video. I am not sorry that this was a 20 minute video. I really am not. I'm sorry that I'm not a little bit more organized and I don't have a beautiful uh, list written out for you people, but go ahead and uh, rewind. The good news is this ain't going anywhere. And I am going to, uh, in the future, be going through working these steps, much like they talk about in the 12 steps. There are working these steps. I'm not going to say to people, hey, what step are you on? Which they really love to do in, uh, in the, the 12 steps. Uh, unlike, um, unlike the 12 step programs, I really believe that you could be working four of these steps at the exact same time. You know, and we'll go over this in more detail because I don't want this to be a half an hour video. But the all in thing. Right? It doesn't matter where you're at. Every day you've got to shove those chips into the center. Every day. Like I said, I'm not going to do this. We'll go through these. But there they are, people. This is what works me. And I mean for me. This is what, why I'm here and I'm sober. And I'm trying to give back. Because this works. I got six years under my belt from the most addictive substance on the planet. And you know what? I'm happy. I was never happy this, uh, this happy using ever. Not on the best day. I really wasn't. Now, on my worst days, things are tough. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come right here. I'm going to go to the comment section. I'm going to tell people how I feel. I'm going to come and look at this camera, and I'm going to say I'm struggling. And my support family, who is considerably stronger in willpower than mine alone, is going to help me through that. That's the dream, people. And it's a reality. It's happening every single day. And you know what? You can become a part of this. Plain and simple, you can become a part of this. How do you do it? There's this blue thing that's going to start floating right here any second, right? It says the Tommy Scoville Show. It's got the uh, symbol on there. You click it, right? That's your ticket onto this boat. That's your ticket to be a member of this support family. Over here are some videos. I'm going to tell you more about who I am, and it's going to tell you a lot about how this came to pass. Click on there. Watch them all. Six times. You won't regret it. I'm Tommy Scoville. This is the Tommy Scoville Show. We will be back tomorrow to name this beautiful boat. God bless you. I love each and every one of you. Work these steps, people. They will work.